Hello again. In the beginning I want to point out that if you are already painting with an airbrush or have had a contact with it, this video is definitely not for you. I made this episode for those who just bought such equipment and those who are just considering to buy it. However, any comments, suggestions and advice from experienced modelers will be greatly appreciated. I'm going to present you a set that I've chosen myself and briefly discuss a few issues that are good to pay attention to when we start the adventure with airbrush painting. First of all, compressor. In my case it is a Chinese TC20T compressor with a maximum pressure of 4 atmosphere. The compressor is small, weighs about 6 kg, has well absorbing rubber fits. Thanks to them any movement of the device during operation is well suppressed. It is very solid. Its biggest advantage is having a 3 liter air tank, so the compressor uses stored compressed air. And it gives us only a few seconds of engine work while filling again the tank. This model already has a pressure regulator installed, so we don't have to worry about its assembly. Under the regulator, in a bowl, sometimes there could be water. It's important to drain the water each time you finish working by pressing the valve on the bottom of the regulator bowl. I think that even for beginners it's good to buy this type of device with additional tank. It costs about $90. Of course, compressors without tanks are a bit cheaper, but remember that it is a device that you will work with for many years, so in my opinion it's definitely worth paying some money for very comfortable work. The compressor also has a safety valve. If the pressure switch works bad and the pressure increases to 6 atmosphere, it automatically releases compressed air. Next element is of course the airbrush hose that connects the compressor with the airbrush. High quality hose, 180 cm long, has internally threaded ends, 1 4th inch to connect uh, the compressor and 1 8th inch uh, for the airbrush. It costs about $5. Although there are gaskets inside the connections, it's good using a teflon tape to seal the connection thoroughly. Make about 3 to 4 rounds and then tighten the hose securely until it stops. Time has come for the most important element, the airbrush. Harder and Steinbeck Ultra. As for me, the choice was obvious. This German company provides very high quality equipment. It's the cheapest version from this table, but many modelers recommend this model for beginners. The airbrush has a quick connector socket, so it's easy to connect with a pneumatic hose. I just bought the basic version of the airbrush for about $85 with a 0.2mm nozzle and a paint container with a capacity of 2ml. But in the future I will probably expand this version with a 5ml container and 0.4mm nozzle. What is also a big advantage is the availability of spare parts. You can easily find a nozzle, trigger, needle, almost every element that could potentially be damaged can be replaced. It's true that there are much cheaper airbrushes on the market, however, as you have probably already noticed, if the budget allows me, I prefer to invest in better quality equipment. On the other hand, I didn't want to exaggerate and didn't buy equipment that I would have to keep in the safe. To make our work easier, I suggest to use this type of uh, 1 8 inch quick coupling. It's very helpful to facilitate the work, faster cleaning and disassembly of the airbrush itself. It costs about $5 and the comfort of work that it provides is great. Thanks to the quick coupling we will be permanently connected to the hose, so I will seal the connection with teflon tape also. Easy cleaning is another advantage of this model. Thanks to the nozzle that is not screwed in and easy disassembly of the basic parts, cleaning is convenient and doesn't require much time. A few words about its work. All the magic happens here under one finger. The trigger we operate has two functions. Pressing it, we release the airflow. It is stronger or lighter depending on the depth of the trigger. The paint in the container at this stage cannot get out of the device. Only when we pull the trigger backwards and thus the needle located inside, the paint fall into the air steam that causes it to spray and eject from the airbrush. Efficient operation of the trigger and of course appropriate dilution of the paint provides amazing control over obtaining perfect coverage and shading. As I said at the beginning, I'm just starting to learn the airbrush, so in this video I wouldn't show you anything else. However, I promise that after some time I will get some practice and make a material about painting or cleaning, which is so important with such a precise device.
At the end I will show you a few necessary add-ons that are worth having at the beginning of the airbrush adventure. Mainly for cleaning but also as a stand, it's worth to buy an airbrush container. It's mainly for removing the paint from the airbrush. Course cleaning chemistry. I have Mr. Leveling Thinner and Modeler's World Airbrush Care Cleaner. Leveling Thinner is one of the best thinners for airbrushing and this Modeler's World uh, I want to test uh, mostly for cleaning. I've got slightly damaged bottle, probably during transport the nut will has broken. However, it is tight so I hope it's gonna work fine. At the beginning I'm going to use mainly Gunza paint, uh, that is Mr. Color now, so I hope that Mr. Leveling Thinner will be perfect for them. Some cleaning materials such as cleaning rods and sticks, uh, dust-free compresses and nitrile gloves. Here I suggest you to look at the dentist shop uh, where you can buy cheaper sticks in various sizes. Look for them under the name uh, micro applicators. Also dust-free compresses and nitrile gloves uh, you can find in much better price. Going back to the compressor, what surprised me the most is the noise level. Only 60 decibels. I expected it to be very loud, but it's not. In addition, when I put it on the floor, his work is so quiet that sometimes I forget that the compressor is uh, working. For example, if you have small children at home and you are wondering if you will be able to work in the next room while they are taking a nap, you really don't have to worry. They certainly won't wake up. Well, at least not because of the compressor. In this model, after switching on the compressor, filling a tank to 4 atmospheres takes about 80 seconds. In this point, the pressure switch turns off the engine. Due to the fact that we have a compressed air stored in the tank, we can work in silence without the engine running. The manufacturer is writing that the compressor is designed for up to 30 minutes of continuous operation, but taking care of its long life I suggest taking breaks more often, trying not to overheat the device. Painting the scale model elements usually doesn't take that long, so this situation will not happen often. When the pressure drops to about 2 2.5 atmosphere, the switch starts the engine and it works again until reaching 4 atmosphere. When it comes to Ultra, I have to tell something about its quality. The airbrush is light but solid. All its elements are made precisely and ensure very comfortable work. Work is actually a bad term. Fun would be definitely better. Airbrush painting will be a lot of fun and will open new possibilities for us. I think that I haven't known even 5% of its capabilities and I'm already very happy of it. I will try to gradually improve my skills and train myself in operating this uh, great equipment. I know that uh, it was more a presentation than some substantive lecture, however I hope that it will be helpful for some of you and you will have a better view of this particular equipment that I present. This video is the last of a workshop series so far. We are returning to scale models. As I promised, we are moving from the shipyard to the hangar or aircraft factory. Another episode, probably in about two weeks. Stay tuned, take care and see you soon. Bye!